Good morning, folks. We hope you enjoyed last night's video on the Ark Discharge to Water. Today we have major cosmology news. We answer last night's trivia question and more. Obviously, NASA's space weather suite is still down, so this little pop at the northern active region is being seen by the Proba 2 swap. No significant flares and the solar wind is calming back now after that minor coronal hole stream, which was unable to produce any geomagnetic effects. Now, if I may for a moment, with NASA's data going down over the weekend, I didn't troll them much because the sun is quiet. They picked the perfect weekend to shut down. But more importantly, I wanted to show all of you that we didn't need them to get the job done. There are other tools, and we know where they all are. But it's worth mentioning, they have redundancies upon redundancies. This was an unnecessary thing that happened this weekend, and we know it. Interesting peak rumble alongside blood echoes in the Dominican Republic. Larger magnitude seismicity has been pretty quiet worldwide the last several days. Up next, we're going to an excellent preprint. For those who can peer review these kinds of papers, you'll find this a good one, with that added confidence in their conclusion that CO2 is not much of a climate factor and internal variability is being underrepresented, to say the least. Up next is a weird one. Scientists arguing that they can't explain the heat flux under Greenland, so therefore, it must not actually be there. Seriously, just like with the mercury in the geology they can't explain, which we saw about a week ago, now they need the underground heat to explain what they see in the ice motion on the surface, but can't figure out how to get that heat under the Greenland ice sheet. So these scientists are claiming it's just not there. Well, in addition to potential volcanic sources, there is the possibility that with Earth's weakening magnetic field, the increased particle flux into the northern polar cusp of Earth is exciting metals or crystals or the water ice itself. Remember, this is where the solar energy prefers to enter the Earth, the northern polar cusp. And always remember that when you can't explain something, the best course of action is not to write a paper claiming it must not actually exist. Speaking of exciting metal, Folks, many of you correctly had your minds jump to the water in the human body last night while watching the Ark Discharge video. Not only is that the right idea, but we're ionic, electric creatures. But beyond that charge, the neutralized metals found in Alzheimer's plaque should make all veteran observers ask what sort of effects might occur on the single molecule level to the ions, in addition to asking what the electricity will do to our bodies as a whole. To answer last night's trivia question requires first reading this correctly. It states that the law of gravity, as the distance between the centers of two objects approaches zero, the gravitational force becomes infinite. That three little dot triangle is the therefore symbol, and so if the limit as r approaches zero is infinite force of attraction, what can we surmise? Well, the only way to actually get anywhere near that limit is with singularities. Otherwise, the outer volumes of the objects collide long before the centers approach that limit. That means that if singularities were on a collision course, right before impact they'd be experiencing almost infinite force, far more than what's needed to exceed the speed of light. And what's worse, that speed should make their mass infinite according to relativity, right? But that extra mass would pull them together even harder and faster in this scenario, increasing the attractive force. The thing that's supposed to stop rockets from reaching the speed of light actually would force these singularities on collision course even faster. That means that either relativity is wrong, especially about the cosmic speed limit, or there are no such things as singularities, black holes. Of course, without one, the other ceases to function in the universe, etc. Stepping back to the primary slap we have at the dark matter paradigm, which is that over the last 50 years since they thought they could see it all and invented dark matter, they've done nothing but find more normal matter and then turn around to ignore the electromagnetic aspects of that matter. They are missing both the matter and the electromagnetic characteristics. Today, they found one of the latter. Folks, this one is heading to nature and has been accepted. We get to read it free on archive and it's everything you'd think it would be. Cosmic filaments are spinning. They describe this as an unprecedented discovery, and I think that that's even an understatement. This better slap the cosmologists in the side of the head and make them realize there is something very different going on. For those who saw our plasma cosmology movie and recall the helical magnetic fields wrapped around those filaments, please recall everything we said about the filament based on that evidence and now realize mainstream astronomy just realized it too. Tizzy and Sue. 
We greatly appreciate your support. If you missed last night's video, you just gotta see it. And if NASA's data isn't back up by lunch, let's troll the bejesus out of them. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe because we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.